Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and before we get into today's topics just a couple of announcements. Tonight, September 10th, Dell is doing Tofu 101 as part of his conversations with Chef Dell. He's going to talk about creative uses for tofu and how you can serve it to unsuspecting people and they won't know the food's healthy and all that good stuff. And then um, next Monday, September 16th, we're going to have a very interesting conference call on virtual workouts which is sort of the coming thing. You know, a lot of people know that they should go to the gym and they need some accountability, but they can't afford a trainer. It's not really convenient. And we're going to show you how having a virtual trainer, kind of an interesting idea when you think about it, um, can be the next best thing to having a trainer right by you at the gym. So um, if you want to participate in those calls, call our office and we'll be happy to get you signed up. So I've chosen two topics for today. And the first one, I'll just start by saying, one of the reasons I wrote Food Over Medicine is I want to change the relationship that people have with their doctors and other healthcare providers. The traditional relationship that most people have is based on the assumption that doctors know best and that patients should follow their advice. And there are times, by the way, to follow a doctor's advice, but it's not true all the time. In fact, much of the advice dispensed in non-emergency situations in doctor's offices is wrong. Unfortunately, my experience is that many of my colleagues aren't reading medical literature and changing their minds about things uh, that have become traditional and, and accepted practices, and as a result, patients are harmed. So one of the reasons I like doing these clips is I get directly to the people who are buying medical services and hopefully can change your mind, and that will help a lot. So today we're going to talk about treatment for hypertension. And unfortunately, in recent years, it's become standard practice in our country to treat what we call um, high normal hypertensives. And the definition of that, by the way, is systolic blood pressure of 140 to 159 and uh, diastolic blood pressure of 90 to 99. That's, those are the parameters there. And uh, we treat these people as hypertensive patients and treatment almost always results in a prescription for drugs. And then patients are told that this will protect them against cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular events and, and death. But the problem is it's not true. Um, a lot of you have heard me talk about the Cochrane Collaboration. It's the most independent medical uh, research organization in the world. And according to a recent meta-analysis, high normal blood pressure patients do not benefit from medication. And so the researchers searched for, searched the databases, found four uh, really well-structured studies that involve drug treatment for hypertension. Um, and they identified four of them uh, that had 8,912 patients, most of whom had mild hypertension. And that was really the thing they wanted to evaluate. And here's the bottom line. Compared with placebo, four to five years of drug treatment didn't reduce coronary artery disease or cardiovascular events in people who had had no previous cardiovascular events. And I'll just read the conclusion to you. It says it all. Individuals with mildly elevated blood pressure, but no previous cardiovascular events make up the majority of those considered for and receiving antihypertensive therapy. The decision to treat this population has important consequences for both the patients, and they list adverse drug effects, lifetime of drug therapy, cost of treatment, and any third party payer, and they list high cost of drugs, physician services, laboratory tests. So the bottom line is <clears throat> what Cochrane is saying, most people getting these drugs don't benefit from getting them. And of course, who does benefit? The drug companies benefit. When they change the parameters for medicating patients, they can sell a whole lot more drugs that way. Good for drug companies, good for doctors, bad for patients. Now, just FYI, the British Hypertension Society recommends diet and lifestyle as the primary intervention tools for high normal patients and advises that these patients should not be medicated unless blood pressure reaches 160 over 90 and fails to respond to dietary change and weight loss. Now, good advice, but you're probably not gonna hear that from your prescription happy doctor out there. So, you know, I've been saying this a lot lately, to survive in this medical environment, you learn to just say no. So if you're a high normal hypertensive patient and you're taking drugs, do not just stop taking your drugs. You're gonna need some help. Some of these drugs have to be withdrawn from very carefully, but do seek some medical advice as to whether or not you should be staying on those drugs and advice about how to get off of them. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about today, we're on the subject of cardiovascular health and indirectly here, sun exposure. According to the scientists at the University of Edinburgh, sun exposure may be good for your cardiovascular system. And the reason is that when we're exposed to the sun, not only do we produce vitamin D, but our bodies produce nitric oxide, a vasodilator. 
Increased ox uh, nitric oxide production helps to lower blood pressure and therefore reduces the risk of heart attacks and stroke. Lead researcher Richard Weller stated that the cardiovascular benefits of sun exposure outweigh the risks of developing skin cancer. In Europe, for every death from skin cancer, there are between 60 and 100 deaths from strokes and heart disease. Now, I just want to take a step backward for a second. I'll return to the study results. Um, in recent years, there have been four very wrong ideas promoted about sun exposure. First thing, people have been convinced that all sun exposure is dangerous and they need to wear sunscreen to get their mail every day. It's absolutely ludicrous. Um, and that sunscreen is protective. The second is that the only benefit from sun exposure is vitamin D. The third is that there's a relationship between low vitamin D levels and um, disease risk or disease incidence and that taking oral vitamin D supplements can resolve a deficiency and improve health. Now the short response to all of that is that people are misinformed, people need sun exposure, sunscreen's not as protective as we thought, supplementation with vitamin D does not improve health. Now the study showed that the body's production of nitric oxide in response to sun exposure was separate from the production of vitamin D. And it may be one of the reasons why we see such poor results from supplementing with oral vitamin D, that there are other benefits of being in the sun. You know, our, our interaction with our environment is a very complex thing, and we keep trying to reduce it down to very simple concepts. And, and you know, Dr. Campbell talks about that in his book, Whole, Rethinking the Science of Nutrition. And it's just a reminder of why we can't substitute pills for the right diet and lifestyle habits. There's just no substitute for getting out of the sun. Taking vitamin D is not an appropriate substitute. Now, this study involved 24 subjects who sat under sun lamps for two 20-minute sessions while their blood pressure was measured. In one session, the subjects were exposed to both the ultraviolet light and heat from the lamps. In the other, the rays were blocked, but they got the heat. When the subjects were exposed to both the rays and the heat, blood pressure dropped. It didn't happen when they were exposed to just the heat. So the blood pressure reduction lasted for about 50 minutes after exposure. So Weller reported, and I'm going to give you the quote here, we suspect that the benefits to heart health of sunlight will outweigh the risk of skin cancer. The work we've done provides a mechanism that might account for this and explains why dietary vitamin D supplements alone will not be able to compensate for lack of sunlight. Love this. There are no pills that are substitutes for the right choices. Now, for those of you who live in northern climates, I get this all the time. What do I do? I live in Ohio. That's where I am. And of course, we can't lay in the sun in the winter time. That's true. But if you will get out in the sun with the remaining time we have left before it just gets too cold to go outside, your body stores vitamin D for use during the winter months. So no excuse. Throw away the vitamin D pills. Get your bodies out in the sun. Okay, that's all for now. I'll be back to you on Thursday as usual. Pass this on to anybody that you think might benefit from watching it. Have a great day.